Welcome and thank you that you found my little corner on YouTube. More than 180 people already did so and this fills me with pride. I still haven't decided which direction to take with this channel. Uh, whether I am going to make more Dutch content or English content. So this video is in both languages. Dus als je niks snapt van wat ik zojuist gezegd heb, dan kun je hier de Nederlandstalige video vinden. In this video I like to show you something I found out many years ago, which makes the plannings of sessions in my backyard a whole lot easier. Join me in the process to create my own Stellarium background and use a little Photoshop and some tinkering in files to make it visible in Stellarium. Imagine wanting to plan a session. You start the Stellarium software and you are presented with the default background with its horizon almost free of obstructions. Wonderful of course, but the real life situation at home will probably have a lot more obstacles. How to know if the object you want to visit is also actually visible? And how long will it take before it will disappear again behind yet another obstacle? This is where a custom Stellarium background will come into play. It will help answering all those questions. Let's see how to create one. Stellarium allows us to view our surroundings in 360 degrees. And as such, we also need to make a picture in 360 degrees. I found that the Google Street View app is the most convenient way to make such a 360 panorama. Um, the best way to do this is to uh, put the camera, your phone, on a tripod so you get the most consistent views. Uh, a downside to that is that of course the tripod will be visible on the uh, on the image. Ah, come on, I just said on a tripod. <sighs> so during this hilarious scene, this is what it looked like on my phone screen. So the Street View app can be opened and in it you find a camera mode. So you just click the camera icon, take photosphere and then you are presented with this camera view with those weird orange circles in it. Every time you aim the camera at one of those circles, it takes a picture. And this way you can do the entire 360 degree panorama. This also directly shows why it is uh, much more easy to do this on a day where it is not totally bright in the sky because otherwise the pictures will have a very different uh, exposure. And when you have completed the entire panorama, you can open the result. You can view if it is satisfied, if you are satisfied with it. And you can then click the well-known share icon. Uh, share privately and then you can click save image and save it in your phone. Opening the file in your favorite image editing software you can see that the panorama looks a bit weird, but that's what Stellarium will make it uh, like a natural 360 panorama. But what we do need to do is remove the sky. And this is what we are going to do with Photoshop. Okay, we're ready for a nice Photoshop trick. So let's go over there and uh, let's edit the sky gone. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make a copy of this background layer. This way we can reserve the original because we will need that later on again. We will also create a new layer, a new layer which we will fill with black. Why black? Well, the sky is black, isn't it? And now we are going to the top layer. And in this one we need to do a nice little trick. What we need to do is right click the layer, go into blending options 
and here we have a layer uh, blending uh, slider and there's magic here look what happens if we drag this layer slider to the left the sky goes away oh wow but it does this a little bit too harshly we can see all those pixels uh, start messing around so what we can do is we can hold the alt key click this slider and the slider will break into two little parts and we can make the cut a little bit less harsh so when the you need to to play a little bit with this something like this okay so not everything is black yet but we will paint this this in manually so we can click OK so what we now need to do is we need to make sure that we have this uh, background copy and we will duplicate it again and we will put it in front of this black layer now everything is reverted again but it's still there we can uh, create a negative mask here so this button over here will add a layer mask if we hold the alt key it will make a negative layer mask and what we now can do is we can paint in this mask with the color white and this will bring back all the uh, incorrectly removed parts this will be much easier to do like this than when we do it the other way around where we uh, try to repair the sky because yeah that's much harder to do you can do this as precise as you want okay next what we need to do is we can uh, make sure that this uh, sky is black where it is now not black I need to remove the parts of the sky that has not yet been filled in like this oh. Okay, now and if we remove the black layer, we will end up with the sky completely removed. This we can save into a PNG file, one with transparency, and then we will have a file that we can load into Stellarium. So now we have the image with the sky removed and we can use this to put it into the correct place the correct folder of Stellarium in it there's also a text file a text file which contains all the information about how the image is rotated as opposed to the sky and you need to put in those um, uh, hello? what hello what if you just show it on the screen it's much easier to explain oh uh yep. yeah i think so yeah okay then we can go into the program files folder um, in it you will find the stellarium folder and in the stellarium folder we will look for the landscapes landscapes can have a multitude of subfolders and you can just create one yourself i made one that's called home winter and in it it has a picture it is the famous picture and you can create a landscape.ini file and this kind of file can be edited and you can give it a name an author a description this is an important one the type of image that we shot using street view is a spherical panorama so this needs to be spherical 
then the file name so that has to correspond to the name winter.png that I have here a map text top this has something to do with the height of the uh, image so my image it goes all the way up to the zenith so that's why it says 90 so 90 stands for 90 degrees the angle rotate Z is a number that indicates the points of the compass to to match reality this all happens on planet Earth so you will have to give uh, Stellarium some information about your actual location on the Earth your latitude your longitude if you want extra position you can also play with the altitude and the light pollution and in this case light pollution is just way that Stellarium displays the sky uh, I'm nowhere near Bortle 3 but this is the most helpful for me so and then the last thing that we can do is to have a look at the end result. <laughs>